Good morning, everybody. Behind me is a 2015 Subaru Forester. We're gonna be replacing the transmission valve body. The code for this was a P0971 pressure control solenoid C. Of course, the valve body has a bunch of solenoids involved, so any solenoid that throws a code, you do the testing of the electrical side, and it ends up being the solenoid, the whole valve body has to be replaced. It's all one assembly. The solenoids are not uh, removable on their own or sold separately. It's just all, all one big thing. So that's what we're going to replace. Now follow along. Let's get this fixed. So the valve body is on top of the transmission in the back of the engine here. I'm going to put some gloves on. What we're going to do is take off this intake boot, uh, flathead, flathead, and then this little clip here, and it should separate. I don't know if there's anything else connected to it, but let's pull those off and let's see. I believe it's also an eight millimeter on these. I'm using a just a flathead screwdriver, but eight mil, I believe. Clip pops off. We'll find that later. Okay. There we go. And there is one hose on this side connected. So we'll get a pair of pliers. There's a little clamp. Oh, look at that. My hands are strong enough. I didn't need pliers. But if you need pliers, uh, just pull that little clamp off. All right. So let me show you what we're pulling off. Get a nice, good aerial view of it. So right here are the electrical connectors. We'll pull that off, but it's this plate right here. You can see the, the shape of it, the outline of it. So this has to come off, this comes off, this here comes off. Really not a whole lot that needs to come off. When we get these, this cover type stuff off, we'll want to clean it off really good with some brake cleaner, whatever you have to clean it off because we don't want any grit or any debris to fall inside the transmission. But this is what we're pulling off here. The valve body is underneath it. So I'm gonna pull these connectors off real quick. There's just little push tabs on the top of them. And just wiggle them out. If you need, like if your fingers aren't strong enough to push on those tabs, you can use your flathead screwdriver and use that to push on the tab while you pull out. Sometimes I have to do that if my fingers aren't working right. Okay, so let's pull this little thing off. Um, possibly a 14, let me get some sizes here. Yeah, so 14 mil on that one and 14 mil on that one. get loose with that. Finish it off with my electric ratchet. All right, that can come out. So there's this little ground strap we'll pull off, 10 millimeter. This is kind of an interesting cover. There's a bolt right here. I'm trying to follow around. I think that's the only one on top. And if you go to the side, there's a bolt right here. No, down below it, right here. But just kind of see where all the bolts are. There might be a second one a little further back. Uh, still easily uh, accessible from up here. But that's our next step is to get that cover off. And then that'll give us access to all our uh, perimeter bolts. 10 millimeter. Looks like just those two is all we need to get that top off. All right, so just like we thought, there's a lot of dust and dirt collected there, so I'm just gonna spray it down really good. Now you can use a solvent if you want. You can use a like a pressure washer or whatever. Uh, perfectly fine. You can blow it with air. I don't like blowing it with air because uh, then it just gets dust in the air and you're breathing in. So we're gonna wash it down with some kind of liquid. Now that everything's clean, our next step, this brown connector has a ground strap going to the top of the case. 
and that is a 12 millimeter. So we'll pull that off. And then this connector has a bracket, they're 10 mil. So we'll pull the bracket off. And then we'll also want to get this other connector, this round one. So this gray one just does a loop and goes into the transmission. We'll pull that. Uh, no, we won't. What we'll do is pull this bracket off. And at the bottom, we'll want to pinch that connector with like a pair of pliers or whatever. You, you'll see it, but there's a little nub sticking out. We'll pinch that nub and push it through. And then that'll get our gray connector to separate from the bracket. So the gray connector separated. If that little tab uh, breaks, like on this one it broke, uh, no big deal. So now the brown connector is just free. We can stuff it out of the way, get it out. So it's not gonna bother us. And then something I didn't mention, but it's just always a good idea when doing large repairs is disconnect the battery so that we don't accidentally short anything out. We're working really close to the starter motor. So there is a live positive feed going to that starter solenoid. So disconnecting the battery will help us so we don't accidentally short anything. Okay, so the gray's done. Everything looks clean. I'm gonna spray one more time. And then it's just a matter of 10 millimeter bolts around the whole perimeter. And this top is ready to, to come out and separate. So this is the valve body. I just opened the box. This is from Subaru. So we went OEM. It comes with, the first thing you'll see in the box is a blanket or a, a cloth for draping over everything. Again, can't stress enough that we want this as clean as possible. So it even wouldn't be a bad idea if you wanted, depending on how your engine bay looks, is to go ahead and pressure wash it, get it really nice and clean before this work. Um, especially if you're doing this yourself, it doesn't hurt. So this is it, the valve body. It's kind of pre-juiced, pre so it's gonna be pretty uh, wet and slimy. But that's it. As far as part numbers, just tell your Subaru uh, dealer what your VIN number is. Usually it's the last eight. They'll line you up because there are two different transmissions that go in this vehicle. I think that's it in the box. What else you'll want sold separately is a gasket set, and there's two O-rings we'll want to be replacing as well. So new gasket, new O-rings. Again, the, the dealer, the parts guy will set you up with this as well. Uh, I think that's it. So let's pull the old one out, and then we'll work with all this. We may or may not use this. Uh, I don't really see it necessary to use, but we'll see. So what we want to do is go back up. So we still have this to take off. They want us to take off the throttle body. So we'll go ahead and take off the throttle body. This is just below the throttle body, a little plate where that ground strap we unbolted from over here, um, that bracket we want to pull off and you'll see that. But throttle body next, then this bracket. We already pulled this cover off. That was that little paper uh, cloth kind of cover. We already pulled this off for the connector, the harness and all that. So our next is the throttle body. Then we'll be, we'll be down here pulling this cover off. Again, just all those 10 millimeters. Throttle body is held on by four 10 millimeter bolts. Before we knock those bolts off, we'll disconnect the connector. Okay, now it doesn't have to be completely removed. They just say set it aside so it doesn't get in the way. Now there is a, uh, couple of hoses attached. Now this might be a coolant passage. So if it is, let me clamp that off real quick. I'm just gonna use a clamp like this. Just right over the top of it. There we go. You might get a little coolant. That's okay, take your air hose. If you get too much spilling around, Take your air hose and blow it away from the top of the trans. There's this little connector right here. I'm gonna pull that off too. There. And then this can just sit aside like that out of the way. And then there's this bracket right here. You'll see it nice and easy to see. 
It looks like two 14 millimeter bolts. And they're just through bolts with nuts on the back. So I'll have to grab another 14 to hold it. There's this little hose on top. You just move around as you need. Looks like a little breather hose or something. Finish up with our power tool. And just take that completely off. Might be able to just unplug it. Yeah, there we go. You can just disconnect the breather hose. There's a little union there. And it actually looks like, too, you can just pull it out of its little, little slot there. So either way, doesn't matter. All right, a lot more room. So I'm going to blow it one more time. I think now we have everything out of the way. So let's go ahead and pull these 10 mils off. I can get to all of them, it looks like, except one in the back. I'll have to use a hand wrench. Just in case any debris came off of any of the bolts, you guessed it. One more time, we're gonna spray around it. Here we go. Right, let me get a rubber mallet. Give it a few taps. Tapping I don't think did much. I'm gonna use a little, little flathead. If I can't just pop up one of these corners or something. There are dowels it looks like that it might be getting hung up on. I'm gonna spray just a little bit of penetrating fluid where those dowels are. Not a lot. I'll let that sit for a second. I'm gonna use just a little pry bar. Be careful prying on a aluminum case. Just gently trying to get it to come up. There, it's almost, almost wanting to come up. There we go. So it didn't take much, just a little, little persuasion. Let's see if that is enough to come up. There we go. So we're gonna pull this up in this direction. Okay, and then there's a connector inside. Sorry, you can't really see what I'm doing. So here's the valve body on the transmission. So it's these two here, this whole string, and then these two, and the whole valve body comes out. Those are 10 millimeter. And then get some rags and be ready. This is where this apron can come in handy. I'm just gonna lay it right over the engine. So any uh, oil or anything that comes off of the valve body while I'm taking it out will just drip onto here. It even has a little hole in the middle. And now you probably can't see, but I'm just going through the hole, picking up the whole valve body. But before I do that, actually, I'm gonna pull all the bolts out that I loosened up so they don't get hung up on anything. I'm gonna set these on a clean rag. All right, here we go. It's just gonna come up at an angle. Straight through like that. Not too bad, some drips, but there it is. Just a big block. So that's inside with the valve body removed. There are these two O-rings right here and right here that we're gonna wanna just pop out. Should pop out pretty easily. And those are the two O-rings uh, that we need to replace. So we'll get those slapped in. I believe that's it. We pop this little uh, gasket off. There we go. This comes out the hole. Uh, it looks like there's a case half here. I'll look in the instructions, but usually when there's a seam like this on a case, uh, it'll get some RTV before the new gasket is put on. But let me double check that. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Other than that, there's not much to do. All right, we got the old valve body out. Not as scary as you might think. Some things to note is just super clean work area. There is the connector inside, so once you pull the cover off, 
There's a connector inside, just push down on it. It looks like it's one of those connectors that go in and you push up to come out, but it actually pushes down to come out. So the, uh, I don't know, the little retainer, huh, I got a break in my glove, but the little retainer is actually on the top. Uh, so that little tab that goes in and locks into the retainer has to be pushed down and then out, not pushed up and then over it. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, other than that, what else? I think that's pretty much it. Then it just all comes out that little, um, looks like a shower curtain, like a clear shower curtain material uh, that drapes over things, has a hole cut out. So any fluid, oils and stuff like that, transmission fluid, that's still inside the valve body doesn't get all over the engine. My initial thought was that was for debris and dust not getting into the transmission, but I think maybe it's a little combination of both dust and debris, but uh, maybe more so the mess of pulling the uh, valve body out. I think that's it. We're going to take a quick water break. When we come back, we'll slap this in. All right, we are back and ready to put this thing in. One thing I forgot to mention prior to going on break was those dowels. There's two dowels that the cover uh, slides over. Sometimes those dowels can get uh, a little rusty. They can kind of glue themselves to that cover. So a little bit of penetrating fluid in those uh, little dowel holes isn't a bad idea. Let it soak for a little bit. You can even do that kind of towards the beginning of everything. So it's, you know, it's soaking for a good hour before we're ready to pop it off. I struggle with that a little, not crazy though, but a little struggle there. All right, let's do this. Just so you can see, I did jump ahead and I went ahead and put the RTV on now before everything's in. Hopefully that's not a, a big deal. I don't think it will be because it's only going to take a couple minutes to slap everything in before that gasket goes on. So not a big deal. I think they give you like 15 minute window time or something like that. But Okay, so we'll pull this out of its plastic. Messy stuff, man. Messy stuff. All right. Just give it a good look over and make sure... Everything looks right. I don't know what would be wrong about it, but it just seems like a good idea. So now we just set this in nice and straight. Doesn't really give you much wiggle room. It looks like it just slides right in. So we got our two silver bolts. There we go. Found the holes. Well, found one hole. Maybe that's the second hole. Okay, found two holes. Perfect. Temporarily torque those down. I want to, before tightening them, just drop in the others just to make sure I get, I catch threads that it's all lined up the way it should be. It looks like it. We're all catching, so we're lined up. Perfect. 6.6 .6 foot pounds, I believe. It's not very much. Temporarily tighten those down. Just snug. So now I'm gonna just finger tighten the others and then torque those down. Let me see if there's a sequence too. I, I didn't see a sequence. But how I'm gonna do it if there's not a sequence is kind of torque down the middle and then the outsides. It's kind of a pretty standard torque pattern. So in retrospect, I'd do the RTV uh, after. And the reason is just in case you get transmission fluid on the, the side of the um, transmission case. You can wipe it off with some brake clean. Just put brake clean on a rag, wipe it off, and then that'll get you that better surface for sticking the RTV on. Okay, let me get my torque wrench and see if there's a pattern. It's like I thought. I didn't see a pattern, so I'm just going to go from the middle. I need a little extension. So this thing is in my way. Just going to remove it. Ever so carefully. Now I'm just gonna go through each one again just to make sure they are good. Especially the first ones that I did, just to double check. Sometimes they need just a little bit more now that everything is tightened down. Okay, nice. So these little channels here, you'll see two little oblong channels that's where the RTV goes. So if you do end up getting a little bit of transmission fluid on that from touching it with your gloves, go ahead and wipe it off with some brake clean so that the RTV has a good stick surface. Grease-free stick surface. 
We'll put that on. We'll go over the dowels. So now for our cover, we want to wipe it off really good with a solvent, get any uh, oil that's on it off. And we're going to plug in, gonna plug in our connector first. Kind of finesse it in there. Plug in our connector. What's nice about the new valve body is it comes with a new connector. So for some reason, uh, your old connector gets damaged while trying to unplug it. That's okay. There, perfect. And just set it over the dowels. And we'll get those snugged down. And really from this point, we're kind of home free. Now follow your uh, directions on the RTV. Sometimes they'll say, snug it up, wait an hour before final torque. Just follow it for your best results. If you want, I'll post it in the link up here. I did an RTV video, just kind of experimenting with the radical work environment. Sometimes we work in how well RTV can hold up even not following the directions. I don't recommend not following the directions, but just in case you want to see how well RTV does, check that video out. So these are 5.9. I did not see any special pattern. So again, we'll start in the middle and then go across and then across and across and just kind of do like a little zigzag pattern. If they don't have a specific pattern for you, then kind of break it up. Don't start one and go around in circles. Do one, then go across from it. Do another, go across from it. Typically how it's done. All right, 5.9 on these. All right, they're all torqued, so I'm just gonna go around one more time to confirm I got every bolt. Like, see, I didn't get that one. All right, that's all of them. Kind of a little pain getting in there with a torque wrench, but we got it, we feel good about it. Now, we can start putting our brackets on. Before we do that, let's go ahead and put this back on. It might be easier to do it now. In fact, even before we do that, let's put this Connector bracket back on. Go ahead and put our bracket on. We won't forget to plug in our hose. A little breather hose on the bracket. Don't forget that this wire connects to the bottom. And that's 30 foot pounds. Put this ground strap back up. A 10 millimeter and it went under the AC line, I believe. And don't forget the ground strap on that brown connector to the top of the cover. That 12 millimeter bolt. That's it. Well, the throttle body's off. We'll go ahead and put this guy back. Let me see if it only goes one way. Yeah, it only goes one way, so you can't get it uh, turned around on accident. That's good. And then for that, we got 36 up front, 42 in the back. All right. I'm just leaving the throttle body off for now because it's easier to, to see stuff. I guess we can put it on. So we'll just plug it in. This one doesn't look too bad, actually. But if yours looks like, hey, time to clean it, go ahead. Can't remember where I put my pliers. Make sure we don't forget the hose clamp, or that'll be a coolant leak once the engine warms up. Get a leak out of there. I want bolts. I don't have the torque on these, but I don't think it's very much. It's a plastic housing and a rubber gasket, so it doesn't need to be crazy so now we can plug these in brown goes to brown snip the gray goes to gray plug in our throttle body that's important and then we'll plug this in up here also important all right air duct and plug the battery back in you don't want to forget this hose here okay Put this back on Eight mil, just snug. There we go. And we got that clip. It just kind of flew out. There we go. I don't see the other piece. I don't see the other piece. We have a whole box of clips, so we'll see which one's gonna work. Just slap it in. Not that one. There we go. Okay. All right, double check everything. Plug our battery in. All right, double check, and let's take it for a test drive. Before we take it on a test drive, we're gonna clear the codes. This P0971, that's why we replaced the valve body, pressure control solenoid C. 
as far as diagnosing or making sure that it is the solenoid and not something else, you're just checking the wiring harness in the computer. Is the computer sending power through the harness? Does the harness have a good ground? And are there any shorts in the harness? So that's pretty much all you are checking for. So really easy diagnosis with a voltmeter. Um, all this other stuff is all past the eyesight. So there was uh, some lights on the dash and some of that is like the transmission control module abnormal. I believe that was causing it. Vehicle dynamic control malfunction. Yeah, so anyway, that's that. Let's go ahead and hit the clear button. We'll just clear out everything. All right, so the only thing that came back with a hard fault code is the air conditioner. We're not worried about that. So let's take it for a spin. So right away, we got it to shift into reverse and then it is shifting into drive. Those are all good signs. Let me throw my seatbelt on and then we'll run this around the block. Hit the highway real quick. All right, we are cruising about 60, 65. The engine is warmed up, everything's warmed up. No codes, no lights, feeling good. All right, there we go. We are back from an extensive test drive. You just wanna drive it around enough, make sure that the engine warms up to operating temperature, the transmission fluid warms up to operating temperature. Uh, get on it, floor it, uh, cruise for a little while, put that transmission through its paces and uh, no codes came back. So I think, I think this is a fix. The valve body itself is very expensive. It's gonna be over $800 for the body itself. The gasket and the O-rings is just a few bucks, uh, nothing crazy there. But overall, it's gonna run you over $800 just for the parts. So if you think it needs a valve body, but you're not 100% sure, maybe pay uh, a shop or the dealer or whoever nice reputable place to diagnose it for you, just so you can be 100% sure, yes, it is the valve body before you uh, unload that kind of money into a repair. But I think that's pretty much it. You have the option if you would like to top off the transmission fluid, that's up to you. Honestly, uh, pouring out the valve body and everything, there's less than a cup came out. So yes, it is a little messy as you pull it up and out, but the actual amount of fluid in there really wasn't that much. So it's up to you if you want to top it off. Subaru has their procedure for doing that. So you can type it up, look for it in Google or whatever if you want to top yours off. CVT, take special fluid. So make sure you're also getting CVT fluid if you are topping it off. Other than that, it only took a couple of hours, maybe three with the filming. So not too bad and no special tools needed, which is pretty cool. All right, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, post them down below. See you on the next one.